Hello, Calculus Kids. Welcome back to another lesson for Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about algebraic manipulation. So we're going to try to find limits by manipulating the little limit there, the expression that we have. So we'll, to start this off, we're going to go really simple, and that is we just use direct substitution. What I mean by that is you just take, if you remember what a limit is, limit is just a y value. So if we take the x value, which we're approaching negative 1, and just try and plug it in. Let's see what we get. So negative 1 and square it, Oops. plus a 2 times negative 1 minus 4, 1 minus 2 minus 4. That's going to give us a negative 5. OK, so the limit of this is negative 5. You just tried direct substitution. And if you think about what the graph is, the graph looks like this. So this is just a parabola, x squared plus 2x minus 4. As x approaches negative 1, what's the y value approaching? It's approaching negative 5 right there. Very simple. That's all this is. OK, so again, for, what about for this one? If you have a constant, if x approaches 2, what is the y value approaching? Let's take a look at what the graph looks like. The graph is just a flat line, y equals 6. Right? Just goes on forever and ever and ever. So no matter what x value we're approaching, the y value will always be a 6. It's a constant. So let's go back to this. So this one, since there's no x value to plug it in, it's just a 6. See how easy direct substitution is? Super quick, easy problems. Now we do factor and cancel. When you cannot do direct substitution, so if we just try to plug in a 0, you're going to end up with 0 over 0. That's something special called the indeterminate form. And when we have this indeterminate, we can't figure out what that limit is yet. So we're going to manipulate it. And what you do here is factor. So I'm going to take that numerator and factor out an x. That leaves me with 4x minus 5. And then in the denominator, I still have this other x. And now you can see here that x and that x, they both cancel. And now all I'm left with is now we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 4x minus 5. So we've simplified this thing. We manipulated it around, simplified it. And now you can say that the limit as x approaches 0, and you just use direct substitution. Just plug a 0 in right there into the x. So 4 times 0 is 0, and we're left with negative 5. OK, so that is the limit. Let's take a look at what the graph of this looks like. So number 3, here's our graph. The graph actually looks like a line except that it has this open gap here, this hole right there at x equals 0. Why? Because if you plug a 0 in, you can't divide by 0. So the graph doesn't actually exist. But if you look at the limit, as you go from the left side of 0 and the right side of 0, it's approaching the same y value, which is negative 5. OK, so we could, the graph makes a lot more sense when we look at the graphs. But sometimes you don't need the graph at all if you just manipulate this thing, factor and simplify. It still gives you the same answer. Okay, here's another one for factoring. So uh, let's try to factor this, and I'll, I will tell you right away, usually, whatever the denominator is here, whatever the single factor is, is x plus 7, it's usually going to cancel with something that's in the other numerator or denominator. So I'm going to start off guessing that one of the factors of this is x plus 7. That usually will speed up your factoring. So how, what do we have here? Remember, think about how you'd multiply this out, FOIL it, for those of you who know FOIL. So this needs to be a 2x in order to get a 2x squared. In order to get the negative 7 at the end here, we'd need a 7 times a minus 1. And then you just double check yourself. Multiply this out, and you'll see if you multiply it out, you'd get a plus 13x in the middle here. Uh, OK, so now that we've factored it, you can see the x plus 7s will cancel. And I'm left with the limit. As x approaches negative 7 of 2x minus 1. Now we can do the direct substitution. Plug in the negative 7 there. That's going to give us a negative 14 minus 1, which is negative 15. Now let's check the graph, just see if that made any sense on our graph. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So here is the graph of this rational function, this fraction here. And you can see, again, it looks like a line, except for right there, there's a gap at negative 7. You can't plug a negative 7 in, so we have a hole there. But the limit is still going to be negative 15, because that's what the y value approaches from both sides. And so that worked out perfectly for this problem. Now, how about limits that don't exist? We've practiced this a lot with the graphs. But if all you have is an expression, and you're taking the limit of this weird fraction or some other expression, how do you know if it, you get to a point where it doesn't exist? Well, let's try to factor this first. So this is going to become uh, something on top here in parentheses that I'm going to factor to. And this is going to be x plus 6. So let's see. With this one, it's not an x plus 6 because we have a 3 at the end here. And the only way to get that is a plus 1 and a plus 3. 
And then if you multiply it out, you'll get the 4x in the middle. Okay, nothing cancels. There's nothing I can do here that's going to simplify this down so that I could then try direct substitution. So in this case, it's as simplified as it's going to get, and I still can't plug in the negative 6. This one does not exist. Now, what in the world does a graph of something like this look like? You don't have to know the graph. You just have to kind of know the algebraic manipulation. Uh, but this is what it would look like. You'd have this vertical asymptote right here at x equals negative 6. And so the left side is going way down here to negative infinity. The right side of negative 6 is going up and up and up to positive infinity. And so the left and right side are not the same thing. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Again, you don't have to know the graphs. It's the algebraic manipulation that we're practicing in this. I just showed you the graphs to maybe see if it'll help you understand what's going on. For the last part of our lesson, we're going to look at trig limits, some special trig limits. When you have sine x over x and x approaches 0, if we were to look at the graph, we would see that the y value would be approaching a y value of 1. And if we took the reciprocal, x over sine x, it would also be 1. So what I'm trying to show you here is it doesn't matter if it's sine x over x or x over sine x. It's the same thing. It's going to approach the number 1. Again, we could look at this special graph and play around with it, but this is what it is. We just have to get this memorized. Make sure you remember that. Now this one, if it's 1 minus cosine x over x, that is going to approach a value of 0. It doesn't matter if we say 1 minus cosine x or cosine x minus 1. It doesn't matter which, but that one also is approaching 0. So notice a few things on this. One, each of these is dividing by x. Or excuse me, not each of them, but these are dividing by x. This one it could be numerator or denominator. But the x value is always approaching 0 for these. So you have to make sure that the x value approaches 0 for every single one. Uh, now, here's the way I remember this. If I have, if you have the one where the sign is involved, that thing right there, the sign, it looks like the number 1. And if you have the cosine being involved in this, I should have said x there. If you have the cosine being involved in this, that cosine looks like the number 0. So, But you have to remember that cosine x also has this other 1 involved, 1 minus cosine x. Okay, I'm going to teach you later in the year a way that you actually don't even have to have these memorized if you do this other rule called L'Hopital's, but... If you, under, if you can remember this, it speeds up the problem for you. You can do this a little faster. So let's show you how you, we use these. For this first one, this is a 3x, and this is just an x. You need this x down here to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a 3 on. So in other words, if I rewrite this and I get the limit as x approaches 0 of... Now I'm going to throw a 3 on bottom. Now, I can't just put a 3 randomly out there. That just magically appear. If I put a 3 on bottom, I have to put a 3 on top. So then I have 3 times sine of 3x. Now, the nice thing there is that now that whole thing right there, that's the number 1. So I have 3 times 1, which is 3. Okay, that's the long way of doing this. I know it didn't take very long. But notice, that, and this is where you can kind of do a shortcut. Notice that you had a 3 up on top here, and the answer is just a 3. You, that works every time. If you have the sine of uh, a 13x over x, the answer is going to be 13. It just works out that way. Uh, or if I had sine x over 2x, the answer to that is just going to be 1 half. So when, whenever you see this, it's like that little thing that's inside there with the x. You can just pull it off the side. It's, that's mathematically incorrect. You don't just get to pull a 3 out. But if you can see the manipulation of how this works, it ends up being the same thing. Okay, so that will speed up these problems. I'll show you what I mean here with number 7. Uh, let's take this fraction. And I'm going to separate and make this sine of 7x over something times, and then I'm at another fraction, and put the sine of 9x here. So I'm separating it, because this would be the same thing if I just put a 1 and a 1. But instead of a 1 and a 1, well, I'll just do that so you don't lose track of what I'm doing. So 1 and 1. Now, I am just going to multiply the bottom by an x. If I multiply the bottom by x, I can also multiply the top by x. So you have to do the same thing, top and bottom. And now you can see sine of 7x over x, that's just going to be 7 times. And then here I have x over sine of 9x. That's just going to be 1 over 9. And then the answer to this is 7 ninths. Now do you see that? Look what we started with. 7 ninths. You see how there can be some shortcuts here you'll start to pick up on as you do that. But this is the manipulation of how you do these trig limits. All right, last one. Cosine squared x minus 1. 
I'm wondering if you can recognize how to factor this. Do you see it? Some of you really smart kids out there, do you remember this? This is what's called the difference of squares, cosine x minus 1 times cosine x plus 1 cosine squared x minus 1. That's the difference of squares, so I can factor it like that. And then on bottom, I still have this x times cosine x plus 1. And now you can see the cosine x plus 1s will cancel. And then I just have the limit. I'm running out of room here. The limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 all over x. And then that's our special trig derivative. And that equals a 0. Okay, that's everything for this lesson. We're gonna do, in the next lesson, we're gonna do some more manipulation with some other more challenging things, but we're gonna start off pretty basic for this one. So rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next one.